All right, guys. So the pitfalls of pre-calc, and these are going to be the pitfalls that I see my students meet the most. Hmm. These are going to be the pitfalls that I see my students um, come up with all, all time and time again as they enter in through pre-calculus. So there we go. Uh, so pitfall number one, guys, is definitely not putting in the work. And the, I think that the the big thing about the putting in the work is a lot of students come from algebra two or, you know, jump like earlier courses where they maybe didn't have to work as hard. You know, maybe they understood math. Maybe they understood their teacher. Maybe they math was easy to them. Um, and what happens is they get into pre-calculus and it's usually a harder workload. They usually kind of struggle making this adjustment into a upper level math course. And I really kind of just describe pre-calculus is kind of like the gateway into our upper level math courses. Um, students, you know, have to understand that, you know, they need to be taking down notes. They need to be putting in the homework. They need to um, be putting in all of the, all the work that is required. And what happens is a lot of times when, um, you know, students, they see success without putting in the work, they just obviously they want to kind of, you know, continue that. And so what happens is um, they get into the course and then they realize that, oh, crap, I not prepared for this test or um, I understand what I'm doing, you know, but I didn't do well on that test or the quiz. And a lot of it comes down to the practice and to the work. Um, and I see it time and time again. It's with students that struggle with math, but they're able to easily get by. And it's for students that are really, really good at math, but they're able to, you know, they didn't have to do their homework before. And then, um, or they didn't have to study before. And then usually a lot of times with pre-calculus, it becomes the first class where they're like, I have to put in a little bit more effort than I'm used to. So that is definitely pitfall number one that I see time and time again with pre-calculus um, students. Pitfall number two is not getting help and giving up. Now, uh, now this one sounded a little weird, but a lot of times when we're dealing with pre-calculus, you know, you're, you're in that upper level math math realm. You, you are considered, you know, smart <laughs> by a lot of people, right? A lot of people have never taken pre-calculus. And I think there's a lot that people take with that, that they feel like they, they shouldn't get help or they need to be able to figure it out. Um, and, and I want you to understand that, you know, we're, we're all on this journey and there, and there's never a race to understanding mathematics. Um, and it's okay to struggle in pre-calculus. It's okay to struggle in any math class, right? And when you're not understanding something, it, it's really, really important to, to get the help that you need, right? And because a lot of times it's just, you know, little adjustments. A lot of times it's just things that maybe you didn't learn before, right? Especially with COVID distant learning, you know, a lot of times it's, it's not so much it's your fault. It's like you didn't, you don't have the prerequisites that you need. Um, but I feel like a lot of students have, um, they, they feel very strongly with, you know, not, um, having poor grades or not feeling, you know, stupid. So they just kind of avoid it. And that, that was definitely me when, you know, I remember I started to struggle. I just didn't want anybody to know that I was struggling. Um, and so I, you know, avoided getting help. Um, because you have to be honest with yourself. If you are not prepared for the course or you're having struggle understanding things, then you need to be able to get the help that you need. I don't know why that's showing up. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, now the, and the next thing is giving up. You know, I see a lot of students that um, they, they feel like, you know, once they struggle with math, then they're just not going to go ahead and try. Right. And the important thing about pre-calculus is unlike a lot of other math courses, it does build on itself, but it, but it also has a lot of chapters that are not as directly related to each other, um, like other math courses. So therefore, I mean, I've seen it time and time again, I've seen students fail at the beginning of the year and get A's at the end of the year. Um, I've seen students, you know, get A's and then get F's, right? So it's important to really treat each and every chapter, um, as, as different because some chapters you will not need help, right? And in some chapters you're going to need a lot of help. So make sure you're getting the help. And just because if you do struggle, don't give up. All right. Pitfall number three is not reflecting on what you did and did not learn. And, and again, this kind of comes into this idea of, oh, I got a bad grade on something um, or that didn't make sense. Like, oh, let's just go ahead and move on. You know, let me let me ball up the my homework grade and throw it in the trash right as I leave the classroom. Right. It's a very common scenario that happens. But I think it's really important as we as we're going through a a journey of learning in mathematics and especially with pre-calculus, um, we, it's very important to, to connect what we have previously, um, learned and also to connect what we, not only from chapter to chapter, but within a chapter. So when you, when you do, I guess I got to turn on my phone. Um, when you are, 
learning, um, learning about something, it's important to to reflect on what it is you're having trouble with, right? And what is it you are understanding? When you get your test back or your quizzes back, when you get something wrong, you need to understand that you're probably gonna be assessed on that problem again, right? If it's gonna come up on a test, it's gonna come up on an exam um, or an EOC, like you need to expect that these problems or these ideas and these processes are gonna show up again. So I think it's very important that, um, that, um, I think it's very important that you are constantly reflecting on the problems that you are struggling or that you are understanding with. All right, now let's get into a little bit of math because I know a lot of those are general, right? And we could probably um, default those to really anybody, um, you know, for any class. But uh, let's go and talk a little bit about the pre-calculus. Now, pitfall number four is going to get into really, guys, I mean, I, I mentioned a lot of algebra too. Most students that struggle with pre-calculus, they struggle because they have some misconceptions from their algebra two content. Um, and more specifically, I would rec I would go into factoring and fractions. There's probably no other concept that I spend more time on with my students than practicing factoring and fractions. Okay, so if there's anything I can recommend to you as you are, you know, going into um, pre-calculus. Now, this is one thing also like in my um, getting ready for pre-calculus um, course, which is free. You can definitely go and check out as well. Uh, in that course, you know, we cover factoring and fractions a lot. And the reason why is because I, it's, it's a barrier for a lot of students um, when they, as they are struggling for pre-calculus. And, and that also goes through, you know, really anything with algebra two, the, um, you know, rules of log, you know, rules of exponents, logarithms, graphing, you know, solving quadratics. Um, all, you know, there's, there's a lot obviously to unpack, but I would definitely say if there's going to be two concepts from, um, two concepts that I could point out, um, from previous courses, it would be factoring and fractions. Uh, pitfall number five is definitely not knowing your unit circle. And, and I don't mean you knowing your unit circle, meaning to memorize unit circle. I am completely against memorizing the unit circle. Um, I am definitely for students understanding the unit circle and understanding how to evaluate a trigonometric function based on a angle found on the unit circle. And uh, that can be in radians or degrees, but this is definitely something that um, is is going to be used not only in pre-calculus, but obviously in calculus and beyond. And it is definitely becomes a limitation, just like factoring um, and fractions are a limitation with a lot of students. Once we start by once we get past trigonometry, you know, we're constantly always using trig and trig and trig. And guess what? Students get held up because they it's either they don't remember how to evaluate using the unit circle um, or it's just taking them forever to be able to do it. Um, so it's definitely a pitfall that I see when students struggle. The unit circle shows up a lot. You know, evaluating those trigonometric functions is huge. So I would um, really make sure that it is a focal point um, as you're going through the course. And pitfall number six, ladies and gentlemen, is application and word problems. So the cool thing about pre-calculus is we actually start getting into the math. You know, once we get into that upper level math course, it, that means the math starts to get cool. That means we can start applying the math to real world situations. We're not, you know, always having to talk about Johnny had 115 watermelons and all this other weird stuff. We can actually start getting into some pretty cool stuff and making math, see, have math make, you know, sense into the world. Um, and so it's pretty cool. But the the problem with that is we got to understand the math before we can understand the application. And, oh, I'm sorry. Well, yes, we got to do that. But then also the application typically comes around in with the word problems. And we all know from word problems, you know, all the way back and as far as we can go, like they become difficult. And with those application word and word problems, we have to be able to dissect what we're really trying to understand uh, or try what really trying to make us solve and what our solution is going to be and reading the question and following multi-step problems, right? These problems start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we really need to uh, consider conceptualize what the problem is asking and how our answer is. And, you know, typically this comes into um, a lot in, in my course, we have uh, applications of trigonometry and it just, it's word problems all over. Um, and one of the things actually it's in my course as well is I think I do 
I think I have a worksheet of like 150 word problems, you know, where students can just practice setting up the problem. Because once you set up the problem and you can do the math and you can break it, you can take, do the math away from the word problem, then, then you're good. Then you're, you know, mostly set, you know, and go. But a lot of the hard thing is setting up the problem from there. And that's what, um, that's what at time I see with a lot of students is because we do have a lot more application and word problems in pre-calculus and um, from other courses. And that's where a lot of students um, get set up. So, all right, guys, uh, as we wrap it up, if you would like for me to teach any of these pre-calculus topics and help you avoid any of these pitfalls, then as you guys can see the link above or off of there, you can just go to brianmclogan.com forward slash pre-calculus and just go and check it out. If it works for you and you are doing pre-calculus, then awesome. Happy to have you inside of the course. Otherwise, as you guys know, I am uh, always making content throughout this year and I'll be continuously posting videos um, as well as pre-cal content for you guys to enjoy. Uh...